walking back and forth. Yeah, I don't have to go to the bathroom, believe it or not. Yeah, I do this because I'm trying to keep you entertained. For those of you who have ever sat and watched somebody stand behind a podium for two hours and give a seminar, you know, man, it's tough. So that's when you see people doing these things. That's what it's all about, to try to reach everybody. How about you don't say? Sometimes your actions speak louder than words. Be aware of the message you send your employees with your body language. Let me just see a little chair here real quick. Let's just say you have an employee that comes to you and says, Brad, I have got a horrible problem. Can I talk to you about it? And you go, oh, yeah. And then you sit there and you listen to them and you got your leg over here bouncing as they're talking to you. What message do you see that this has? Yeah, impatience, lack of interest, urgency. It just basically says, nice story, but don't give a rip. Yeah. Hand on the telephone. Now, I was guilty of this one. I had an employee that just busted my office. He's about probably 275 pounds, big guy. He just busts through my office door, almost scares me, sits down in my chair in front of my desk, and starts talking to me about things when I've got a lot of things to do. He doesn't ask permission to do so. I found myself with my hand on my telephone. I would go right up to my hand on the telephone. I was sitting there talking to him one day. I looked over and I thought, what the heck's that doing over there? I don't have to make a call. But I finally realized I was trying to get him to see that i got things to do. i got a call to make right here. I found myself doing it without even thinking about it. Raising an eyebrow. See, you might have a good friend come to you and say, I swear I did not have sexual relations with that woman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that might show disbelief, questioning, or surprise. <laughs> Nodding your head. Now, nodding your head's a cool thing. See, when you're nodding your head, you know, you're telling the person you're right with them on the story. So you have that employee come in and say, oh, I got a horrible problem, Brad. And you go, oh, sure, tell me about it. And you got your head nodding like this. You're listening to that story. See the head? It says, I am all over this story. I am right with you. Now, inside, you might be saying to yourself, boy, I don't have time for this crap. <laughs> but this head, I'm telling you. Yeah. Leaning forward. Now, whether you're seated or whether you're standing, leaning forward does have some different signs to it. If you're sitting in your chair talking to an employee like this, this has a different visual message than this. It's very easy to see. This says, I'm interested in you, and this one kind of says, <laughs> Looking away. When your cashiers are working with customers, make sure that during the time that they are face to face with that person, that they're keeping their attention on that person. You know, looking over their head and looking at the other people behind them, that just drives us absolutely nuts. And if you're out front and you're working with someone and you see something, a security concern or whatever else it is, don't keep looking around. Excuse yourself from the person. Excuse. It's better to do that and remove yourself totally and deal with it than to sit there and look over this person's head. It drives me crazy. Remaining silent. Now, remaining silent is a very powerful motivator. Remaining silent is good news. Even to take your employees, monthly or quarterly, and, and sit them down and just say, tell me how things are going around here. How, what do you think we can do to improve the place? And say nothing else. Just absolutely shut up and just listen to them. You know, again, God gave us two ears and one mouth for a reason. If we could just use them that way and listen twice as much as speak, it's a big motivating effect. This is true, too, when customers come in and customers are complaining about something. Again, let them just listen. Let them get it out of themselves. Crossing the arms on the chest. This is rarely good news. When anybody comes over to you like this, this is just not good news most of the time. This is a defensive mechanism. This means they're putting up a barrier. It's an invisible barrier, obviously, but it's a barrier between you and them. They have some anxiety, and this is a sign right here. They're not going to let you get to them. So if you have a customer that comes in or an employee and their arms are folded like this, as you do some of the things we just talked about, watch the arms. If they come down, that means that you've dropped that barrier. And some of it can just come from simply just listening or leaning forward, nodding your head, some of these things we just talked about. Slouching shoulders. Watch your posture while you are in your restaurant. As you are in your restaurant, keep your energy up. Even if you are beat, keep your shoulders rolled back, keep your energy up, let them see that energy in you. 
Just take one time for an experiment, walk into your restaurant, and just do this. <laughs> <laughs> Try that. All of a sudden, you look around your restaurant, all the employees are going, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> just like that. Widening of the eyes. Widening of the eyes is motivation, anxiety, interest, or it could be a holdup. <laughs> Here's some of the top motivators for employees. The number one motivator still is, after about 20 something years, recognition. Simply recognize an employee for doing something good. An employee would rather have some praise a few times per week or once a day than they would a 25 or 50 cent an hour raise. It means more to them. The employees will tell you, no, no, I want money. Not true. Non-cash awards. Non-cash awards can be gift certificates. It can be a, a half a day off or a couple hours off, some free time. It can mean Microsoft stock. I mean, whatever you got around, throw it out there. <laughs> Being listened to. Again, a very big motivator, just sitting down with employees and saying, just tell me what's going on, tell me how you feel about things, and let them just speak. Big motivator. Top D motivators, office politics. It'll kill you. We talked about that. Don't get in the middle of it. Let them work it out together. Unclear expectations, hypocrisy, and being taken for granted. Reasons why employees leave companies. Well, 34% is from limited recognition or praise. Reinforces what we just learned earlier. 29% is compensation in some form. 13% limited authority, 9% personal conflicts, and it is 16% other. Now, here's top qualities of an outstanding employee. Hold this, hold these things up to yourself and hold them up to your employees and find out how do they stand up. You have a positive attitude? Are you enthusiastic? Are you determined, motivated, confident, optimistic, dedicated, happy? Are you a good listener? And are you patient? And the best hiring practices are still, bar none, hire to smile and train the skill. You cannot train people to smile. The last page is on action. What can we do? tomorrow that we did not do today? What are some of the tools that we can put into place to make some behavior change occur? These are just ideas. The first one is a personal action plan. See, few of us like being told what to do, and very few of us obviously like being dictated to. I'd like you to fill in the word dictated. We don't like being dictated and told what to do. As I said earlier, when you tell an employee, I want you to do this, they go, I don't think so. That is just the way we are. What I'd like you to think about is maybe setting an employee down and saying, what are some of the things that you can do to begin to exceed customers' expectations? And what can you do to improve your performance? And ask them about the things that they would do to change and see what they can come up with. And in order to do that, if they do do that, and do their own things, they've now created their own destiny. And change will occur much faster. I'd like you to go to the four lines down, far right hand blank there, four lines down, right side, it says the employee has now created their own destiny. And they'll feel more responsible and more accountable about making the change occur. <laughs> Here's the three questions I would like your employees to ask themselves. They should ask themselves, what should I start doing? What should I start doing? Fill in the blank. What can I start doing tomorrow that I did not do today? What should I keep doing? There are some things I'm doing now that are really working. I want to keep doing them. The last one is, what should I stop doing? What are the things that aren't working? You can do an action plan monthly. You can do it quarterly. You can do it any time you want. In my office, before we do any reviews, we always have the employee turn in a personal action plan first. So we get to see what they're looking at in terms of change, and we incorporate that into their reviews. By the way, there can be more than one thing for each of these. So what should I start doing? Somebody might think of three things. Great. When it comes to what should I keep doing, there might only be one. 
What should I stop doing? There might be two. Whatever. Allow them the freedom to pick those things. And then you ask the employee, when they've got it all filled out, ask them, how long is this going to take to initiate? When can you start? And they'll say, now? Great. It'll happen much faster that way than if you try to mandate it. Mentoring. Now, mentoring is not new. I'm not trying to paint it as a new theory. But I would like you to understand the reason why. The reason for mentoring is very simple. When you hire a new employee to come into your environment, it is human nature for employees to come into a new work environment and seek out people much like themselves. They will find the smoker, if they're a smoker, they'll find every, the person closest to them. That is not always good news for you. I would highly like to recommend that when you hire a new employee, if they are going to be working at the register, I would recommend that you take them over and say, John, I want to introduce you to Mary. Mary's going to be your mentor for the next few months during your training because this is the person that we hold at highest esteem. Now there's absolutely no you know, problems about understanding who that person should be like. It is very clear that you want to be just like this. You want 20 more people like that. That's the reason for mentoring. Seeking the wow factor. You might maybe on a monthly basis, if you have monthly meetings, maybe hand out three by five note cards to the employees and ask them to write down on that note card an idea. Maybe even give them a few days to think about it. But think of an idea, something that they can do that might exceed people's expectations, that might wow the customer. Maybe it's not even for their job. Maybe they're a cashier, or maybe some, they've got an idea for some other position in the restaurant. Have them come up with some ideas and see if you can utilize and attempt to try some of these. Now, you have to let them know up front that not all of these eyes, ideas will be used or tested, but you want them to try a few of them, try to find something new that you've never done before. The fourth line down is a blank. You want innovation. Please fill the word innovation. How about a weekly praise list? You might take if you've got, again, five employees that work underneath of you, you might take a piece of paper and write their names down on this piece of paper. Maybe even photocopy it, maybe ten times to give you ten weeks' work. But during the next week, Monday through Sunday or whatever your work week is, make sure that you get to praise each one of these people for something. What it will do is it will force you or your supervisors to keep their heads up more, looking around and trying to catch the employees doing something good. Because, I, again, praise will change behavior. I don't know if you've ever measured it or not, but there's only an 18-inch difference between a kick in the butt and a pat in the back. Not a big distance, but it's a big difference in how we motivate people. I'd like you to fill in the next line, which is praise breeds change. Praise breeds change. I think that if you praise people, they will change your behavior much faster. And that's what this does. It allows us the opportunity to give praise to these people and make sure that everybody gets a little bit. Praise specific behavior or action, not just thanks for the good job. When the employee walks out at the end of the day and you go, hey, good job today, you might confuse them. They might be saying, well, what was so good about my day? Till's $40 short, I got yelled at three times, dropped two trays. That was not a real bonus day in my eyes. They want to know something very specific. They want to know, you know, John, today you had that angry customer around noon today. Man, you handled that beautifully. That was a piece of work. I would highly recommend praising an employee around other employees so the other employees can hear it. So the other employees go, wow, is that what it takes to get praise around here? I can do that. How about don't hit and run, thank you. Take time to sit with the employees or take some time, walk over to the side, look out in the eyes and take some time to really give them some sincere thank yous and some praise. So just make sure that at the end of your work week, if your praise list has five people on it or ten people on it in total and you have not done one praise for the entire week, do not run through the restaurant going, hey, good job, good job, good job. Outstanding. <laughs> No. And do not praise ordinary performance. They won't be driven to do better. Weekly thank you notes. You might even consider just getting a small box of Hallmark cards or some little stack of cards, put them in your desk drawer. There is, it's amazing what that does when an employee thinks you took the time 
You saw them do something. You saw them carry a tray out for a senior citizen. They opened a door for a senior citizen. They did something. And you went, wow, that was really neat. And you took the time to go back and just write it into a small card and give that to them. Man, that is powerful. They do not forget those kind of things. Please fill in the blank. Each week, you should pick an employee who has stepped outside the box and is trying new things to better themselves and the company. That is worth a card. And as Dwight D. Eisenhower once said, you do not lead by hitting people over the head. That is assault, not leadership. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you very, very much for taking this much time today. I appreciate it very much.